have Professor Monsignor Dr. Jan Makniak from Poland. You've heard the professor speak. Uh, he's worked for 30 years, as I said, at the Shrine of Divine Mercy in Poland. He worked closely with the Archbishop. His role has been in that 30 years to learn, to investigate, to study, to know more about the life of St. Faustina, Father Sapochko. It is such an honour and a grace to have him here. This is his last talk. He flew 28 hours to be here. He's enjoyed it immensely. So please make him feel very, very welcome because he represents Poland and we love to have him here. Could you please welcome <laughs> Father Jan? Thank you. God bless. Thank you very much again for this opportunity to speak to you, to so big crowd. I am very happy to see you whole week. We are following, we are going deeper and deeper in the mystery of divine mercy. With Sister Faustina, Saint Sister Faustina, with John Paul II, with Father Michael Sopochko, with Pope John Paul II, Pope Benedict, Pope Francis, who is giving us this wonderful year of mercy. Last time, yesterday in the morning, I spoke about this year of mercy, important, big opportunity to spread the divine mercy to the people that don't know until today this mercy. Now I would like to speak to you and thank you for your patience about the idea of divine mercy in the private visions of Sister Faustina Kowalska in the context of recent theology. But I don't like to speak about high theology. Sister Faustina entered in a very deep mystical experience. She spoke to Jesus and she heard his voice. She saw him like she described when uh, one painter in Vilna, today is Lithuania, painted this image of divine mercy. She said, Jesus was more, more beautiful, but I am happy, but I am, I am very happy. I would like to ask again, do we can see the Lord how we can see the Lord with our eyes, is this possible? Our Lord Jesus Christ lived long time ago in this world, in, Ju in Judea, in Galilea. 2,000 years ago, he was born from the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem. Then, as a young teacher, he was going from the village to the village, curing the people. And a lot of women used to say, oh, how wonderful you are, how beautiful you are. Then he took the cross, was crucified, died on the cross. But the third day, when Mary of Magdala and another woman came to the tomb, was empty. When Peter came, the tomb was empty, but the day, the same day in the evening, the disciples were in Senacle, in Jerusalem, in upper room, and Jesus entered. It was difficult to recognize him, but when he said to them, peace be with you, they recognized him. Thomas was not this evening in upper room in Jerusalem. When he came back, he said, I don't believe, I have to touch. And the week after, Jesus came and said to Thomas, touch my wounds and be not unbeliever. You have to believe. And we know what's answered Thomas. My Lord, my God, my Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the background, the theological background to speak about the visions of Sister Faustina. As uh, apostles, after death and resurrection 
of the Lord, of our Lord Jesus Christ, saw him. They saw him not only in Seneca, they saw him also in Galilee when he came to them and he said, prepare something to eat, prepare the meal, because they said, oh no, this is some vision, but not real Lord. And he started to eat with them. My dear brothers and sisters, dear apostles of divine mercy, I will say in the same way, we can see Jesus and Sister Faustina in the same way, saw Jesus. In the beginning, she was surprised. She said, it's impossible to see the Lord. But Jesus came many times to her when she was praying, when she was uh, during the Holy Eucharist, during the Mass, and he said, go to your superiors, tell to the people, I am mercy. How, how was all these visions of Sister Faustina? In the history of the church, we have the visionaries. We can show in the history of the church, the people who saw uh, Jesus, not only men, but also women. F for example, in 11th century, German nun Hildegarda von Bingen, Benedictine nun, she saw Jesus and she spoke with Jesus. She wrote the book, Stivias, to know the way of the Lord, to know the way of God. Very powerful woman, founded big monastery in Bingen with, with, with the, her book, she was very popular in middle age. Then Elisabeth von Schenau, another German Benedictine nun in 13th century. Mechtild von Hackeborg, we like our Mechtild, she came to give witness here uh, in Auckland, New Zealand. Lot of women, but also in Italy, St. Caterina of Siena. Then in France, St. Marguerite Marie Alacoque, she saw the heart of Jesus and she spoke with Jesus near to us. In 19th century, we have St. Bernadette Subiru, simple girl in Pyrenean mountains in France. She was in a uh, wood and she saw beautiful lady. And this lady said to her, drink water from ground. And the simple girl said, it's no water here, but discover it will be water here. And she started to discover a ground and found it the wonderful source, 150 liters per one second until today, going out, and in this water, a lot of people are receiving the health. My dear brothers and sisters, we have also the children, the three children from Fatima, Saint uh, Blessed Francis, Hyacinta, and Sister Lucia, she lived almost 100 years as a small children. They saw Blessed Virgin Mother, they spoke, and the simple message, pray the rosary. Today, Medjugorje, I heard many times here in this congregation about Medjugorje, I believe. The church, we are waiting for the approbation of the church, but the Holy Father Benedict, as uh, Cardinal Ratzinger, he said, until uh, the visions, the apparitions are still in life, we cannot judge. We have to wait to the end of the apparitions. And we know that in Medjugorje, they are until today, the apparitions, one or two women 
are receiving these apparitions. My dear brothers and sisters, theologically, it's possible to see the Lord. How is he coming? When I said one day in a big conference that our Lord was speaking to Sister Faustina in Polish, the people said, oh, it's impossible. He was Hebrew. He knew Hebrew, how it was possible. How to explain this? Blessed Virgin Mother was speaking in Portuguese in Fatima, but in Lourdes was speaking French, simple French, simple French, so popular French. Uh, we say in theology, God is speaking to us in our language to be understandable. God revealed himself to the chosen people, to the Hebrews, to Abraham, Jacob, to Moses, and spoke to them in Hebrew to be understandable. The Ten Commandments gave in Hebrew, the Old, whole Old Testament in Hebrew. But the revelation of God didn't stop with Jesus. Jesus is present. This is the full of revelation. But Jesus is present and is speaking also today. We have to be careful. We have to check if it is really true vision, true apparition. We need the approbation of the church, the approbation of the bishop and of the pope, the two instances to approve this vision. It was the same with Sister Faustina. She believed that Jesus is speaking to her. She entered in the mystery of God, like Moses when he saw the fire and heard the voice, and he heard the name of God, Yahweh, I am who I am. We going to listen this moment of revelation in today's first reading of third Sunday of Lent. And we believe that God was speaking to Moses, Yahweh, I am who I am. But what said Jesus to Sister Faustina? Jesus said, I am mercy. Is this possible that God is mercy when we are proving the Old Testament in the Bible, in the book of Exodus, we find true revelation of God. In the beginning of the Exodus, when Moses went for the first time, the name of God, Yahweh, I am who I am. But we know that Moses used to go many times. And one day he asked, Lord, explain me, who are you? Because your name is mysterious. I can't understand. And God said to him, I am mercy, forgiveness. I am love without end. I am love who is so beautiful, like love of mother to the child. In this way, God was explaining to Moses who he is. What is the meaning of Yahweh, the mercy, the name of God? And we know the Holy Father Francis wrote this book, the name of God, mercy, the name of God. So my dear brothers and sisters, the theology, the idea of divine mercy, we can say is the biblical idea from the beginning of the revelation after Yahweh, we are receiving the second name of God, mercy. And through mercy, we can enter in the mystery of God. Sister Faustina received also the light to see how beautiful is God. She saw and she wrote in her diary, 
it's important to read the diary of Sister Faustina about the light. She said, I saw the light without end, ocean of light. But I recognized the light of God Father. I recognized the light of God's Son. And I recognized the light of the Holy Spirit. Three person, one God, three person. My dear brothers and sisters, we can ask from where Sister Faustina received this knowledge. And this is, we say, the mystical knowledge, the infusion. When we are praying, we can receive this knowledge, this light from God. And I think this is very important for everybody because they are the way to study about God. A lot of years of studies of theology, philosophy, but it is another way to know God, to receive this knowledge in prayer, in mystical experience. And Sister Faustina received this idea of divine mercy through the mystical experience. As I said yesterday, be not afraid. You have the same possibility. You don't need to study. It's good when you have the possibility to read something about theology, but the most important way is to be in presence of God, to be in the front of God, to hear, to listen to him and to answer. And you can have seven year like Francis from Fatima, or you can have you can have 12 years like St. Bernadette Subiru, or another people, or like Peter, or like John, when they went with Jesus to the mountain and they saw the light and they hear the voice, this is my son, follow him. This is, I, th I think, the most important from the message of Sister Faustina, that everybody can see the Lord, everybody can speak with the Lord, and everybody can enter in the mystery of God, the mystery of the Holy Trinity, God's Son, God's Father, God's Son, and God Holy Spirit. Sister Faustina saw not only um, the heaven, not only the light, but she saw also uh, evil. She saw also Satan. She was surprised because one day the Lord said, go to the whole world. This world is going to the bad things. You have to stop this, this way to con condemnation. She asked, how, Lord? Speak about Satan, speak about fire that is waiting for the people. Speak about hell. And Jesus showed Sister Faustina all these terrible things. She recognized the people going down and she said, now I have to pray for the these people who are still in life. This is very also important thing. We had during these last days uh, the witness of Zach King. And maybe somebody of you asked, is this possible? Sister Faustina saw the Saturn and the hell. And she said, this is a terrible thing. And we cannot change this reality of the hell. What said to us Jack King in his witness, I believe the man with free will can ch choose, can make choice this or this way. And Sister Faustina also in this theology of evil is very, very important. As a witness, she saw this. 
She saw also the temptation of the evil. When she was sick, without a will to, to, of life, he came to her and said, you see, where is your Lord? The temptation, where is your Lord? He promised that you will apostle of his mercy, that you will go to the whole world. He's not saying true to you. Nobody will hear you. The sisters will think that you are crazy with all your minds or your thoughts. And what said Sister Faustina? Jesus, I trust in you. With the last respire, and he left her. In Krakow, in convent, he came many times to her room to say, don't write about my mercy. I will fire you. And she felt the smell of fire. But she said, no, I am listening to the Lord. And she restarted to, to write the diary. And now, now we know all things about her visions, her apparitions. One day he came to her when Father Sopochko, her spiritual director, went to Holy Land. It was 1935, the Jubilee year at that time. And the Satan said to Sister Faustina, fire your diary. Fire your diary, because it is not good. This is only for, for you, not for another people. You can this fire. And she went to the kitchen and fired the first book of diary. When Father Sopochko came back, said, what's happened, Sister Faustina? And she told him, because she was very sincere, like in confession, she said, I hear somebody who said, it is not good to write about all these things. And this ghost said to me, fire this diary. And I did this. Father Sopochko said, you, can, you have to write again. And when you are reading the first part of the diary of Sister Faustina, you can see that she is remembering the old things and then writing the recent experiences, describing the recent experiences. My dear brothers and sisters, dear apostles of divine mercy, you have this privilege, the last day of our Congress, Oceanian Congress on Divine Mercy, to enter in this knowledge of the life of Sister Faustina. And I hear it many times in your witnesses that you understand very well this, the importance of this truth about divine mercy. This is really a very important, very important for our time. I understand Holy Father Francis. He said it will be a jubilee year of mercy, a special year. It's not occasion. Year 2016, this no occasion because it's not like 2000 or 2033, the, the year of the death of Jesus, but Holy Father knew very well. The idea of divine mercy in the private visions of Sister Faustina, I will say only this, that uh, Sister Faustina received a lot of visions but she saw also the glory of God. She saw also the way of development of this theology of divine mercy. She saw many theologians criticizing this theology of divine mercy. But Lord said to her, don't worry, only write and leave this. The people will know what to do with your diary. Today, the diary of Sister Faustina translated in 
50 or 55 languages in, in the world. After Holy Bible, the most popular Catholic book, book in the world. To, the, to end this my talk, I would like to give a witness about John Paul II, because I came here to speak about these two apostles of divine mercy. I had this opportunity to study the diary of Sister Faustina, and then I met personally John Paul II, especially the last year of his life. I was in Rome in the uh, documentation of this uh, pontificate of John Paul II. I could speak with Holy Father, and I asked him, how was Holy Father uh, the attemptate 1981? May 13th, the day of the apparitions of uh, the Blessed Virgin Mother of Fatima. It was in the afternoon, about five hours in the afternoon. And uh, Holy Father was in his car visiting St. Peter's Square. And uh, according to his custom, touching the people because they wanted to have the personal, direct contact with the Holy Father. And when he was at the right side of the Peter Square, the killer killed twice, twice, and Holy Father went down. Then, Another twice, uh, Pistola and the American nun was wounded. It means that two men were prepared to kill the Holy Father. They took him to the uh, hospital and started the operation. Uh, he lost almost all blood. They gave him the blood. Eight hours of operation. Uh, the most important organs were not touched. So it was, it was hope that he will survive. Uh, the nine hour of uh, operation, they took him to his room and he opened the eyes. He asked uh, the private secretary today, Cardinal Jivish, did we pray the breviary, the prayer of the priest? And Jivish said to Holy Father, Holy Father, you are wounded. Nine hours operated. He said, what's happened with me? Like from deep sleep, for deep sleep. He survived, but he came back into Vatican. The temperature was every time very high, and they checked his blood. In his blood, it was one special virus. Nobody knows this virus. And the Italian doctors send it his blood to, uh, to United States to check what, is, what kind of virus in a military uh, hospital they check this virus and they recognized new virus not known in Europe. It means that in the blood of Holy Father it was a virus. Somebody prepared this blood for Holy Father. Uh, this is really a very big mystery. Two killers on the Peter Square, and then the special blood prepared for Holy Father in uh, Policlinico Gemelli in Italy. Why? Because the evil 
The Satan wanted to kill him, but in the uh, apparitions, in the visions of Sister Faustina, in May 1938, is one vision that from Poland will come one uh, sparkle of fire and will prepare the world for the coming of our Lord. Very mysterious vision that Sister Faustina had. What is the meaning of this vision? Anytime, anyhow, Holy Father survived. Holy Father survived and entered with the whole church into Jubilee year 2000. After attemptate, he said, I have, first of all, to dedicate the whole world to the Blessed Virgin Mother. And when he came for the last time into Poland in August 2002, he dedicated the whole world to divine mercy. I, I will say to you, take from, uh, from website this dedication of the whole world to divine mercy and pray the small prayer of Holy Father and try to pray with another people. I think this is a very, very important prayer. So I, I would like to finish with this witness uh, of uh, Holy Father John Paul II. I met him personally in Rome. Uh, the last year of his pontificate, I was in the center of documentation, and he said to me, uh, not only to me, to also to another priest, one day at the table, very important to pray the chaplet of divine mercy. I am praying every day. He was praying every day at 3 p.m. in his private chapel with the nuns. They helped him to pray at the end of his life because he was so weak that he couldn't pronounce the words. But I think you, you have this mission to bring this message of divine mercy to your country. In different way, you bought the pictures of merciful Jesus or Sister Faustina. You have the rosaries. You know, you know the chaplet to divine mercy. They are different simple ways. And be not afraid. Uh, really, Lord is calling you today to, to bring this message. I'm very happy that there are a lot of young people. They were singing uh, in, with, with beautiful power. With this power, be apostle of divine mercy in your, in your special way. Father Rory is coming to me. It means I have to finish. What's a shame. And I will bless all uh, rosaries, all pictures, all images of merciful Jesus than you uh, uh, bought. You, you. We can stand up and we can pray together uh, for the blessing. In simple way, we can pray our Father and Hail Mary, and then I will say the blessing, and uh, I will sparkle with this holy water going through this congregation, a big congregation, a lot of people tonight. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses if we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you, Amen. and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now we are. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit.
May Almighty God bless you and all objects, articles that will remind you the divine mercy, the rosaries, the medals, and the images of merciful Jesus. May they are for you and for the people that you will find in your home country the sign of the presence of God between you. May our Lord bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Domini in eternum cantabo, misericordia seini in eternum cantabo, misericordia domini in eternum cantabo misericordia domini in eternum dantabo misericordia domini in eternum cantabo misericordia domini in eternum cantabo misericordia domini in eternum cantabo misericordia Domini in eternum cantabo, misericordia domini in eternum cantabo, misericordia domini. In eternum cantabo, misericordia domini. In eternum cantabo, misericordia domini. In eternum Cantabo, misericordia domini, in eternum cantabo, misericordia domini, in eternum cantabo.